Hi friends, I'm Mr. Bulla and today I'm going to talk about some of my favorite actors who never went to any acting school and learned acting on their own. Acting is a process of self-awareness. The more you do it, the more you become good at it. Every day on a set is like a learning day. The most important thing about acting is passion. If you're passionate about it, then you can do it. In this industry, you might feel insecure that you never went to any acting school, so you cannot become a good actor. And people might tell you that you should have learned how to act in acting school. So today I'm going to give you an example of some of my favorite actors who never went to any acting school and learn acting on their own. And let's just begin. Fahad Fazil. This one is a really good story. Fahad Fazil's father was one of the biggest directors of Malayalam industry. He has introduced actor like Mohanla into the industry. What else can I say about him? He has given us many chitra also. The film that has been remade, remade, remade in so many industry, but it still stands out. So when time came to debut his own son, he took matter into his own hands and made his debut in 2000. But movie was a flop and it got a natural response from critics and fans. And Fahad Fasil acting was highly criticized in this movie. Lot of reviewers and audience were saying that the only reason that Fahad Fasil was in this film because of his father. Instead of him, his father should have given chance to some other young talent. And Fahad Fasil was mentally tortured and bullied by media after this film. And Fahad later defended his father stating that don't blame my father for my failure because it was my mistake. I came into the industry without any preparation of my own. So after this ba bad debut, he moved to United States for five years where he pursued his studies. And when his father was asked in an interview, you have to introduce late actor like Mohanlal, but you couldn't make a proper debut of your own son. He said that he will be back and what a comeback it was. After coming to India, Fahad studied acting on his own. He got some small roles on his own. His one role was highly appreciated by critics and fans. So then he started to get big roles in a movie. As each film was coming and going, his performance was improving more and more. And in his, each film, he impressed his audience more and more. He proved that he is fucking talented and he is not here because of his father. He was here because he was supposed to be here. Now Fahad Fasil is not a name anymore. It's a brand which provides the best cinema out there. He is one of the finest actors working in Malayalam industry. And his name should be right there with the great ones like Mohanlal Momoti for making Malayalam cinema more popular than ever. He has his own production company now <laughs> and his eyes. He's one of the best actors we have after Irfan Sir who can act with his eyes. Vinit Kumar Singh, born in Varanasi, Uttar Pradesh, his father was a mathematician, but Kumar always wanted to join National School of Drama. But he could not pursue it due to parental pressure and social norms. So he decided he's gonna become a doctor and now he has a doctor degree. One day, Kumar came to Mumbai to participate in a superstar talent hunt. After winning that competition, director Mahesh Manjajat, who was also a judge of that show, offered him a role in Sanjay Dutt's starter, Pita. But film was a flop and after that film he had trouble getting further roles. Then he used to work as assistant director for Mahesh Manjrekar in films like Virud Deha. In 2007, Singh left direction to solely focus on acting and after that decision he got some Bhojpuri serial and some small roles in movie but he finally got his big break in Mahesh Manjrekar film known as Lal Bhatt Parel and after that film, Anurag Kashyap tasked him for a role of Danishtan in his cancelled film known as Giants of Basipur. And 
After that film, he acted in few of his films like Adli, Bombay, Torchwitz. But after a few years, he thought he was not the original role that he wanted. He was not getting a type of work that he wanted. So he decided he's gonna write his own strip on boxing. Being from a sport background, you know how athletes were treated in sports. So he wrote the strip and he used to go to a lot of producers. Every producer used to love the strip, but they were not very happy with it idea that him playing a lead as an actor so all the producer used to say no to him then Anurata Shab learned about the strip so he read the strip and after reading the strip he said the strip looks similar to Rocky then Vinic said show me Rocky in Bollywood however Anurata Shab found the sequence where the lead character gets the government job very interesting so he said he's gonna make that film under two conditions. He will change the strip a little and he had to look like a boxer. And Mutravaz was made and it worked very well, critically and commercially. And after that film, he has been constantly getting good roles in a big movies like Razi, Santiat, Gold. Now he has two films as a lead and two web series under his belt. What was the challenge of this movie? I didn't get acting school from any acting school. I didn't know a lot of it. Hero acting school is not coming. Hero is coming. This is a big deal. Mega star Momoti. Momoti is one of the biggest legends of Malayalam industry. When you speak about Malayalam industry, you cannot leave this man out because he's basically a face of Malayalam industry. He has made over 400 films in his career and he plays his role with so much conviction. It's just hard to believe that he never learned how to act. Ever since he was a kid, he was always fascinated about acting. He tried to pursue it and he always knew one way or the another he's gonna make it into this industry. Now, I gather your dream of becoming an actor was born the day you saw your first film. My first movie. I don't remember which year and when I, uh, how old I was. I still remember the hero. I don't know who was who the hero was. Might be MJ or somebody. Was uh, galloping on a horse to save the heroine. And he was wearing a tie also like you. And the tie was flying like, you know, when you uh, uh, ride the horse, it flies. That is the image I have. That day I have decided I will become a hero like that. But I don't remember that I have done a role like that yet. What was it that attracted you? The idea of riding a horse or riding away with the heroine? <laughs> no, I was a small kid, but see, uh, it's, I think the narcissist in me started growing then. <laughs> who started, you know, narcissist is actually a, a who falls in love with uh, his, own, his own image. So you fell in love with yourself at that moment? Might be. <laughs> <laughs> now, in fact, you got your first break in a movie very young. You were just out of school when you got a role in, and I'm probably going to mispronounce it, so forgive me, Anubhavangal Anubhavangal Palichagal. It's during, just after finishing my schooling, I was on my vacation. I just uh, was trying to, I was, as a fan, I'm an enthusiast of some movies, I was, uh, went to watch a shooting happening. I was I just requested my the director Mr. Sedu Madhavan. He is a very famous director. Can I can I can I get can I try can I can you give me a chance to appear in this? Uh, in the, then he said, you come. Just he, I was supposed to run with a very popular comedian, and I I tried to act even then. Then he said no no don't do it don't. <laughs> it's because it's because I was very very new to the sunlight when and they were keeping very strong reflectors being black and white films. I could not often, I was keeping like this. And he said, don't, don't act. He thought I was acting because the, emo the scene was a little emotional. Then uh, when the film was released, I became a star in the local, my village. And it all literally happened by accident. By accident. If you hadn't asked him for a chance, you might never have become an actor. No, I will be, I, see, that was, the, uh, I mean, uh, searching for a chance to appear in a film was continuous. If he did not, if I was not able to ask him, I would have asked for the, to the next director. 
sadly though, although you became a, quite a local star with the film, mm. your next film, Deva Lokam, never really Deva got Lokam after a long time. And it never after got finished after three days of shooting. That's when I started, when I, I, I was, uh, I finished my, uh, that's in my last year of my law. I was uh, uh, called to act in a film, which was uh, produced by Janashakti Films and directed by M.T. Vasudevan Nair. And that is still in the cans. It is not in Khan, it's in the cans. <laughs> <laughs> but why? What happened? What went wrong? Why did it not some get finished? Problem and some problem, which I was not very aware of it. So at this point, when the first movie happened and the second never happened, did you begin to despair? Were you getting disheartened? No, uh, without any delay, MTA called me again for his next film, which is called Vilkan under Sopnangal, The Dreams for Sale. And this one actually fulfilled your dreams? I have started selling dreams now. Did you, did you realize when you were acting in that movie that this was going to change your career? Make no, your no, no, no. I was expecting a small, small role like Hinchman, yes, both kind of roles in, you know, second, uh, third, fourth villain or something, because I was doing little negative uh, role with a negative shade. And when you discovered plan. the actual role you had, were you surprised? Because I was presented as a full-fledged hero, which the film, even the film was not a super hit or even it, it, it was a flop actually. Another film called Mela, which is, was directed by K.G. George, one of the best directors we have in the South. And uh, an actor who was with me in Vilkan and Supnangal called Srinivasan introduced me to Mr. George and he gave me a good role, which I was with all potentials of a hero. I was presented that way. I was uh, supposed to sing. I was in a very adventurous kind of... Uh, he was playing a circus, motorbike chamber in the circus. So I was presented, presented as a hero. And from there, people started giving me, giving me smaller roles. After uh, three years, in 1983, a film called... Um, film directed by Mr. Vishambaran. Was, uh, again, I was playing a lawyer in that film. That film clicked. And then, in fact, the Mamuti legend was born. I became a hero then. Even before, even the very first, first year of my career, 1981, I got the best supporting actor award from the government of Kerala. 1983, 84, 85, I got continuously with actor. There came a point when, in fact, you got so many awards, <laughs> getting awards must have become boring. <laughs> no, 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 no. I love to be awarded. At number two, we have San Geno, this South Korean actor, mostly known for creating phenomenal films like a taxi driver, a maze of murder, the horse, and the parasite. He wanted to become an actor since he was in 8th grade, so he directly started doing theatre. He joined some theatre groups and he never learned how to act. He learned it on his own and he did some plays and from there he started to get some small roles in a movie. Then he started to get big roles in a movie from gaining recognition from the small lords and that's how his film career started. At number one we have Johnny Depp. If I tell you an actor who played character like Captain Jack Sparrow, Sweeney Toad, Edward Scissors, Willy Wonka, Edward, Tonto and Barnabas and Benny never took any acting lesson and learned acting on his own. Would you believe me? Yeah, it's hard to believe because Johnny is just pure perfectionist at his job. So it is just hard to believe that. You cannot find similarities between any of his iconic characters. He just brings something new. Sometimes it is just hard to recognize him in his role. Because he doesn't just play character, he just leaves that character on screen. He makes that character come to life with his acting. Let me tell you one beautiful story which I heard so many times, but it still baffles me. Johnny always wanted to become a musician. When he was 12 years old, his mother gave him a guitar and from that his music career started. Uh, so, when he was in college, he dropped out of college to pursue his music career. He joined one band, it was known as the Kids, where he played a guitarist. And 
band had a lot of success in Florida, then band moved to Los Angeles to pursue their music career. They changed their name to Fish Don Method and they, during that time Depp used to work as a salesman. He used to sell pen. Johnny Depp used to sell pen. <laughs> it's just weird. Johnny Depp used to sell pen. He used to work as a salesman. Then his band broke and he was broke. Then he was filling out job application and he used to work as a salesman selling pen and then one day one of his friend was a well-known actor in hollywood his name was nicholas stage he told him to j acting a shot with everything he has done and then he introduced him to his agent he started first role in nightmare in m street and raised his history it's very exciting it's also very strange because you don't expect that kind of a response you know you don't expect people to be there waiting for you, knowing who you are. You know, it's just, it's very new to me. So I'm dealing with it the best way I know how, which is right now just, uh, I try to, to meet as many people as I can and uh, in a situation like they have downstairs with all the kids, I, I try to sign as many things as I can. I don't want to hurt anybody fe anybody's feelings or, uh, or uh, make them feel like uh, I don't have time to do that. You know what I mean? But it's very hard because they're saying, please sign this, please sign this, and then I have these those guard guys pulling me saying, come on, we gotta go, we gotta go. So it's it's a little strange to be in that kind of a situation. Is it true that you were selling pens when Nicolas Cage introduced you to his agent? I Can was. Can you tell us about the story a little bit? Yeah, I had moved to uh, Los Angeles in 1983 with a, a band I was playing with. I used to play guitar in a band called The Kids. Um, and I met Nick uh, through a uh, friend of mine, and uh, he thought I would be all right if I if I, uh, he thought I should try acting and you know give it my best shot. And I was selling pens over the phone, making about fifty dollars a week, maybe something like that. And uh, I had met his agent. She sent me to read for Elm Street or meet the people, and I uh, just got very lucky and got the role.